Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here, and this is part two of organizing and displaying data. We've been talking about rank order distributions, simple frequency distributions, and grouped distributions. And today I'll show you how to do all of that in Excel. Okay, so here we are in Excel, and you can download this spreadsheet in the description below if you want to follow along and open it right up. Okay, so in this first tab, Rank Order Distribution, all we really need to do to create a rank order distribution is to sort this column of chin-up scores. These are chin-up scores um, from a group of 10 subjects. Now, before we do that, though, I want to show you how to use a few different functions. The first is the max function which finds the largest value in a cell range. So we'll just type in equals max, open parentheses, select the range, close the parentheses, and hit enter. And then that shows us that we had a highest score of 12, a max score of 12. And then we'll do the same thing for min. Select that same range. And it looks like the low score was 2. Now to find the range, remember, we take the max score minus the minimum score, and that gives us our range. Okay, so for this data set, the max was 12, the min was 2, and the range is 10. Now, in order to create a rank order distribution, we will highlight the entire array, including the count number, right? So this is um, essentially what subject number this was from or or what score number this is and we want to keep that associated with the score even when we rearrange it so we highlight the whole thing we go over to data and we click sort and it will ask you which column you want to sort by we want to sort by the actual scores column f and we want to sort it from largest to smallest click ok and there we go we have a rank order distribution now a couple cool things we can do in excel we can highlight this range and go over to the Home tab and then click on Conditional Formatting. And Conditional Formatting will format your cells according to a series of conditions that you specify. The simplest one would be data bars or color scales. And they're actually also some of the most useful. So I'll just click this blue data bar. And look, now we have this nice visual representation where we can see how these scores are distributed. And it looks like 2 is a, is a pretty far and away the smallest. It's an outlier on the small end of this data set. Now I'm going to hit undo, command Z, to get rid of that, and try the color scales. Let's do a three color scale. I'll click on that. So the yellow scores are kind of the mid-range. And at the low range, we have this 2 sticking out like an outlier. and 12 at the top is the max score, and that's in green. Now, it's pretty easy to see just without the data validation how these scores fall because we only have 10. But imagine if you had 100 scores, then data validation would help you quickly distinguish high and low scores as well as any outliers. Okay, moving on to a simple frequency distribution. So we're still looking at chin-up max numbers, and I've already sorted these from high to low. So the high is 16 and the low is 2. But let's go ahead and go through this again. So max of this range, min. And to select the whole range, what I'm doing is clicking at the top of the range. And then I hold down Command and Shift and then press the down arrow. And that automatically selects everything in this column. max minus min. And we also want to count how many scores we have because I've already sorted these by the number of chin-ups and so this count number doesn't actually show us how many subjects we have in this data set. So I'll use this count function which counts the number of non-blank cells in the range. Okay, and it looks like we have 50 individual scores. So our table is arranged from highest to lowest or largest to smallest. And even if we conditionally format this, it's kind of hard to tell where the majority of our scores fall. 
you can kind of see it. You can kind of see that most scores are between 9 and 11. But let's get an actual frequency distribution going. Now we're going to use the frequency function. And the frequency function is an array function. So it's a little bit different than usual functions where instead of pushing enter, you have to push command shift and then enter to tell Excel that it's an array function. And what I'll do is actually select all of the cells where I want this to go. I'll type equals frequency. It asks for the data array and the bins array. So for the bins array, I'll select the bins that I typed out. And now I'll hit command, or sorry, control shift enter. And there we go. It looks like it has done this correctly. So we can see automatically, the really cool thing about this function is that, that it gives us this conditional formatting where we see this sort of sideways histogram um, that's giving us the frequency of our data. And we can tell that this data is fairly normally distributed. Okay, and so now we have the number of times each of these scores occurs. And we see that the mode is, is right at nine. Okay, so moving on to a grouped frequency distribution. This one is a little trickier. Now we're looking at back squat one repetition maximums. Okay, so the, the range will be much greater on this and we actually have quite a few data points. So let's calculate these really quickly. Okay, so we have a thousand scores with the high score being 224 kilograms and the low score being six kilograms. That person, maybe they haven't learned how to squat before uh, or maybe they have a pre-existing condition. And and we have a thousand of these scores. Okay, so we have to, to determine our group number and size for this grouped frequency distribution. And let's see, 224 is the max. So let's just go ahead and do, we'll do 10 groups. So the group number will be 10 and the group size will be equal to 224 divided by 10. And that gives us 22.4. Let's go ahead and decrease that to 20, okay? So we wanna use a nice round number so that it's easy to understand this grouped frequency distribution. So I will type in bin, the bin max and the bin range. Okay, so the first bin will be zero to 20. So the upper limit will be 20. The next upper limit will be equal to 40. And to automate this, let's just go 20 from that first bin plus another 20. And now if we drag this down, we've automatically filled out the bin max. And the bin range is just going to be 0, 0 to 20. 21 to 40, and so on down the line. Okay, and now that we have these bin ranges and the bin maximums, we are going to use. Oh, you know what? Let's also put in. Let's also put in the minimums. So the minimum here is going to be zero, 21. Okay, now we have the bin minimums, the bin maximums, and the bin range. And we want to calculate the frequency. So we are going to use the count ifs function. And what this does is count the number of cells in a range that meet more than one criteria. Okay, and we will specify those criteria. So the range will be B3 to B1002. That's where our data lies. And what I want to do is actually lock this range into place by pressing F4. On a Mac, you might have to hit the function key and then F4. And what this does is this puts a dollar sign in between the cell reference. And the cell reference is composed of a letter B and a number three. And if we lock both of those, then when I drag this, um, or when I copy and paste this cell or drag it down to fill the cells below, it, the reference will stay fixed. It will be an absolute reference and it won't move.
Okay, we'll have to put a comma, and our first criteria is going to be greater than or equal to the bin minimum. Okay, so if I'm going to put in a logical function, or sorry, a logical statement into Excel, I need to give it quotation marks. So I'll put the quotation mark, and we're going to say greater than or equal to, and then I want to reference this bin minimum, but I can't just click on that cell. What I have to do is close the quotation mark, use an AND symbol, and that AND symbol is going to join this greater than or equal to to whatever I put next to it, which will be the cell reference for the bin minimum. And I'm going to keep that cell reference a relative reference so that it slides down as I drag the formula down. Okay? And so that will be my criteria number one, and then I'll put a comma, and now I need another criteria range, so we'll put the same range in, and again, we will lock it into place. Oops. Okay, and we'll put a comma. And then we need our second criteria, and our second criteria is that we want it to be uh, less than or equal to 20. Okay, so we need to use quotation marks for this logical operator and then join it with the AND symbol and reference where we have our bin max. And it looks like I'm done, so I'm going to close the parentheses. Okay, so now what this function is telling Excel to do is to count the number of cells that meet these two criteria. The first criteria is the number of cells within this range that are greater than or equal to the bin minimum, which is in G10, and the number of cells that are also less than or equal to the bin maximum, which is right here in H10. So I'll hit enter, and it looks like there are five. Okay, so now, because I've locked in the, the data range, and I've kept relative the bin minimums and maximums, I should be able to just double click, and yes, it worked. I double clicked and it pulled this formula down. So let's see if we click right here. Look, the, the cell range is absolute and it's locked into place, but these slid down with it because we kept them relative. Awesome. Okay, so that is a grouped frequency distribution. What we can do is conditionally format it with some data bars. Okay, and I'm actually going to center these. Brilliant. Okay, another thing we could do is we could also click on the data tab and go over to the data analysis button. If you don't have this data analysis button, you can enable it by going to tools and then down to Excel add-ins. And then if you are in on a Mac, you just make sure these are both checked and you hit okay. On a PC, I believe it's under preferences or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to click on data analysis and click on histogram. So if I want to generate a histogram, okay, it asks me to specify a few things. First, it's the input range. Okay, so this is all of the scores that I want to have in my histogram. Okay, so I've just given it the range. Then it asks for a bin, a bin range, and in the bin range, I will put the bin maximums. I'll highlight these. Good. And it asks if I want labels, and I'll say yes. Then it asks for an output range. And for that, I'm just going to click right here, and then that will put the histogram in this general area. And I will keep this checked, this chart output, because I do want to see the chart. We'll click OK. And now it has generated a histogram automatically. Oops, and I actually did something wrong. I left because I left the um, because I told it to label um, the scores. What it did was it made this first bin a label. So let's actually let's actually undo that data analysis histogram, and I just need to tweak this bin range. Let's start from H nine. Okay, there we go. That looks better. So. Now we have this histogram, and it's showing us our bin maximums as well as the frequency, and we can see that it lines up with what we calculated here. And it gives us this nice histogram, which we can adjust, and we can label it back squat 
one RN. Okay, thanks for following along with me as we created those frequency distribution charts. If you want to continue learning about statistics and kinesiology, go ahead and click on over to the next video that should appear somewhere on the screen. Don't forget, if you missed part one of this, it will be linked down in the description. Until next time, keep moving well, living well, and teach other people to do the same. Thank <laughs> you.